Should you take your CPP early or should you defer it? That's the question on a lot of people's mind. That's the question we're addressing today in this video. We're going to get right to it. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, portfolio manager here, Canaccord Genuity Wealth Management, and at the Tatro Wealth Advisory Group. This is a question we come across often. If you're watching the video now, take a sec to subscribe, take a sec to like our videos, send us your comments. We'd love to hear from you. But seriously, subscribe. You know, you'll be in the loop. We put out all these new videos. You'll know what's coming up. So the CPP, the Canada Pension Plan. So it's a pension plan that we all subscribe to. We all pay every single month on our paycheck. The money comes out, goes towards this bucket. It's incredibly well-funded. Surprisingly, there's a big kind of misinformation out there about how much is in there, but there's last valuation was $434 billion, and uh, the actual report said that it was sustainable 75 years out. Now, let's leave that aside. You are faced with a decision. You're 60 years old. You're thinking, do I take my CPP early? Let's get into that question. First of all, you can take it at 60. Most people will take it at 65. That's kind of a standard age. You could also defer it all the way to 70 meaning you don't take it to 70. Now you must apply to start receiving your CPP. It's not just going to show up on your doorstep like an Amazon package. Now they take the best 32 years out of 40 years. Okay. So if it's 65, it'll be your best 32 years. If you start at 60, it's pretty much all of your adult livelihood. They also drop the child rearing years out. If you were on mat leave, if you had a family, they will drop those years out completely and you don't have to worry about those. So the maximum at age 65 currently, and this is, gets a adjusted every year for inflation, but it's $1,175. But the average Canadian retiree receives $710. So you've been contributing to this account. If you've made above the equivalent of roughly 58 grand in today's dollars for your entire working life, you will be getting the maximum. I shouldn't say your entire working life. If 32 out of the best 40 years, if you've made 58,000 roughly or more indexed, you will be getting close to the maximum or 1175 Now, if you've had some years that you were way above that, you're only getting credit for the maximum in that year. And if you had some years that you were well below that, there's a formula that works at CRA to calculate the percentage in every single year that you contributed to the CPP. Now, should you take it early? Okay. So you're 60 years old. Let me start with this. If you take it early at 60, instead of at 65, you're getting 36% less. It's 0.6% percent per month early that you get less. So if you take it at 64, you would get 12 months times 0.6, you would get 7.2% less. If you take it at 63, you would get 14.4% less and on and on. So if you take it at age 60, you get 36% less. That's more than a third less. So typically what I will say to clients is you should absolutely not be taking it if one, your cash flow doesn't need it and two, you're still working, right? If you're still working at age 60 and, you know, I've heard this common kind of analogy out there. Well, you know, I might as well take it because, you know, who knows the Canadian government might go bankrupt or, you know what, I can get it now. I might as well take it. Remember that this gets added to your income. So if you're currently working, you're making a hundred grand, you're 60 years old and you take your CPP early one, you're going to be getting 36% less CPP and two, it's going to be added on to your T4 income. So if you're getting, you know, know, $8,000 a year or something like that, well, it's being added to your income and that might push you into another tax bracket, which would mean you're getting, you know, maybe $5,000 of that 8,000. So those are situations where you strongly want to consider not taking your CPP early. Situations where you do want to consider taking your CPP early. One is if you need the cash flow. If you're in a situation for whatever reason, cash flow is not optimal for you. Well, you know, you got to put food on the table. You got to put a roof over your head. So, you know, I would strongly advise you take it. Take a look at your planning situation. Take a look to see if there's anything we can optimize with respect to your wealth so that maybe you don't need to take it. Two is your health, right? If your health, for whatever reason, doesn't look that great or your outlook for your life expectancy doesn't look that great, obviously you want to take it now because the bird in the hand, right? Significantly more than the one that's in the bush. The break even period for most individuals, assuming neutral tax considerations now is about 14 years. That's the break even period if you're deciding to 
to start early. So if you're deferring, you need to live at least 14 years for it to be a beneficial for you. And those of you out there who've seen life expectancy charts, you're probably well aware that for a 60 year old life expectancy is quite a bit more than 14 years. So for most Canadians, assuming no change in tax brackets, assuming no need for cash and assuming no health considerations, for most Canadians, the better call is to defer. Okay. Now, obviously, I don't know your personal situation. And I'm not going to give you advice here over a video. But I will tell you this, if you're not sure about this, if you're wondering how you should do this, please go to www.speaktorob.com. Happy to book a no obligation consultation to take a look at this and anything else that might be on your mind specifically with respect to investments. So remember a couple other things. So 14 year break even period. Now we talked about taking it early. So if you take it early, you get 36% less for those five years, right? 0.6% per month. However, if you take it late, if you defer it, the government will actually give you 0.7% per month in addition. So if you defer it all the way to 70, you get 42% more in your CPP monthly payment than you would if you were to just take it at 65. So if you don't need the cash flow, the health is okay. And if, especially if you're still working, by all means, defer it, guys. Reminder that the benefits are indexed for life for CPI. Remember that there is no income test for CPP. Whether you make a million dollars or one dollar, you will get your CPP because you contributed to it your whole life. You're going to get whatever portion that means for you, whatever portion of the 32 best years minus the child rearing years, that's what you're going to get. Remember that the future CPP enhancements are now based on new contributions after 2019 no income test. Finally, I'll just say this. A lot of people, I do a lot of this. I'm a portfolio manager. We do wealth advice. I have a finance MBA and I was a practicing lawyer for years. I can tell you that I've seen a lot of people screw this calculation up. And sometimes it's a significant amount that it costs a couple for someone to make a mistake on the CPP question. So you're not sure whether to take it early or not. Remember the things I talked about here today. And if you're not sure, please go to www.speaktorob.com. Thank you so much for taking the time. I'm Rob Tatro from robtatro.com, portfolio manager here, can accord genuity wealth management, CPP decision, whether to take early or not. It's a tough one. Hopefully we helped you out today. Looking forward to our next video. Thanks. Have a great day.